Hey, I'm Tanya. I'm a behavior analyst and I've been working with parents for over 10 years on helping them manage their children's challenging behaviors. A big thing that comes up is compliance, obviously. My child won't listen to me. Why does he keep talking back? Why is he saying no? I don't think he's even paying attention when I ask him to do something. These are all common issues that parents come across. And one common thing that experts tend to tell you, me included, is that it's very important to be consistent with following through when you ask your toddler to do something. And what I've noticed over the years is that that means different things to different people. So I think it's very common for people to be confused about what that means. And so I thought that I would go over it in this video in case it helps you with your toddler. You can follow through in different ways. You can do hand over hand or physical prompts. This can be either full physical or partial physical. What does that mean? Um, a full physical prompt is, for example, if you're trying to get your child to pick something up, you're going to put your hand over their hand and you're going to guide them through the process of getting the toys and putting them in the bin or wherever they go. If you do partial physical, all that means is that you're slowly guiding them with small physical prompts. So you may hold their elbow or just lead their arm where it needs to go as you're helping them clean up. Uh, it, a common time when I have to use that is if a kid is trying to throw the toys instead of picking them up. That's a common one for toddlers. So I may, you know, let them pick up the toy on their own, but then guide their hand to the bucket instead of, you know, letting them spring their hand back to throw it. That's a big one. Uh, another type is modeling. So you can follow through by modeling the behavior you want your toddler to do. So if, let's go back to the cleaning example, you ask your toddler to clean up and they're not cleaning up, you may go over and start modeling it for them. Let's clean up, show them how it is. Uh, a common thing I like to do is to turn it into a game. So I'll have them put one in, then I'll put one in and you know, turns into a whole thing, but gets them to clean up so it works. <laughs> uh, a different way to follow through is using gestural prompts and that's pretty self-explanatory. You're just gesturing, all right, grab that toy over there, put it in this bin. That toy goes over there on the bookshelf. Just gesturing to what you want. And then the last type of way to follow through is with verbal prompts. And that's literally just technically what I just described, but maybe without the gesture. So you might say, please put the elephant in the stuffed animal bin, put the cars in the car bin, make sure to put the book on the bookshelf. So which type of prompt is best? And the answer to that is it depends on your child and it depends on the task. Because if you know that you have a child that is going to begin throwing themselves to the floor or kicking and screaming if you touch them to help, you know, start getting them to clean up, then that may not be best because you're simply going to escalate the situation and make it worse. So maybe with those kids, it's best to do modeling and gestures and verbal prompts. You can mix them. You don't have to stick with just one. You can always try one. Then if it doesn't work, try a different one. Um, if you have a child that is distracted because the TV is on, then verbal prompts may not be enough. So you may need to actually turn off the TV first. That's a preventive measure. And then maybe either use gestural or modeling prompts, or you can try verbal prompts then. It just kind of depends. Or let's say like your toddler is having a tantrum. That may not be the time to do a verbal prompt. Maybe you do modeling at that point or just gesturals until they can calm down and you can communicate effectively. Because when toddlers are in the middle of a tantrum, they're basically just kind of shut off, not paying attention to you. It's not the time to communicate with them. Usually just wait until they've calmed down a minute and you can let them know you're there for them. I understand you're upset. As soon as you're done calming down, we can talk about it. Something like that. The main thing is, as I mentioned in the beginning, is that no matter how you follow through, it's very important that you do it consistently and that you do it pretty much right after you've asked for it to be done. I do sometimes give kids a warning if they're a little bit older, like around the age of five or six, I might say, hey, remember I asked you to clean up. You can have snacks when you are done cleaning up the toys whatever it is. 
So I give one warning and then if that second time when I say, you know, you can have a snack after you've cleaned up, if they don't listen right away within like five seconds, I'm immediately over there and prompting. So that's when I'm using the physical prompts or the gestural or the verbal or the modeling prompts. The main thing is just be consistent. Why? Because you want to teach your child that you are going to follow through no matter what. And so no matter what their response is, whether it be a tantrum, whether it be a protest, whether it be arguing, whether it be running away from you, no matter what their response is, you are going to make sure that they do what you've asked them to do before they can do anything else. They will learn that there's no point in engaging in those behaviors. So their compliance will actually increase over time. But if every once in a while you slip up and you don't follow through, what you're teaching them is that they can gamble. Like, is she gonna make me do it this time or not? I'd really rather just keep playing, so I'll just wait until she does something about it. Uh, that's kind of another point as to maybe not giving a warning for the younger kids to help teach them faster. Just ask them to do something and then within five seconds immediately start prompting them if they haven't started on their own. It's just gonna teach them to listen a lot faster. And usually if you do it soon enough, you can avoid the tantrums, the protests, the arguing, and get to more peaceful parenting. <laughs> get back to the things that really matter to you. Spending time with your child, enjoying quality time with them, and hopefully transitioning from activity to activity with more peace. <laughs> I hope this was helpful. If you're interested, you can subscribe to see more videos. I put one out once a week and I've got several others on my channel if you want to check them out that will be linked down below in the comments not the comments the description <laughs> i always forget what these things are called otherwise i'll see you in the next video bye